Cupertino, California. Who could this be? Uh, hello, Evans Wizard Repair Shop. How can I help you? Oh, Tim Cook. Well, well, well. Oh, you found a bug in Wizard, did you? Well, I found a bug in Apple, and I am not pleased about it, pal. Uh, getting rid of OpenCL was uh, not a nice thing to do, all right? You know, five years ago, you said this was going to be the future of computation. I was naive enough to believe you and write all my apps around it. And now, in June, at the developers conference, you say OpenCL is going away because it's just not good enough for you anymore. And so, yeah, you're making me rewrite all this code for not a whole lot of perceived benefit. And all my test metal is slower than OpenCL. And I'm, I'm not alone in that. You can go on YouTube yourself and you can look up the videos for OpenCL versus metal. And most of those tests come back saying metal's a lot slower. Okay, well, it's going to be faster. Okay, well, it's not faster yet, so I'm, I'm not happy about that. And second of all, I need double precision computation. There's just no way around that. If you want something that's remotely scientific, I, I need the decimal places, bro. Help me out here, Tim. And, like, the least you could do is let this OpenCL still run on the CPU. Is, is that so hard? Oh, it is hard. Okay, well, anyway, I'm not pleased about it, so I'm not going to be taking any bug reports until you guys figure this out. You know, i got to get back to work. I'm porting all these kernels over to metal as fast as I can, and it's a slog. So, thanks for the report, but I will have to see you later, bud. <sighs> CEOs. Gosh. So presumptuous. Well, as, as you may have heard me say on the phone... I'm in the middle of porting my OpenCL code to Metal, and I wanted to share with you a few tips for making this process slightly less painful. So let me show you what I've done so far, or at least part of it. I'm going to start by showing you the uh, kernels that I'm working on, rather than the glue code, because the glue code's kind of boring, and it's it's kind of similar, and that stuff's easy to port. Uh, so. The library that I'm working with today, I called Metal Earth, and it's a port of Proj CL, which is an open source project that I made for doing geodesic computations like the distances on Earth and map projections using uh, OpenCL, which I thought would work great on the GPU when I first wrote the thing, but the GPU compilers were terrible, so I had to fall back to the CPU, and then slowly the GPU compilers got better and now they're getting rid of them all together. So that's that's where we are. And so I've been working on this for the last week or so. And it's not a lot of fun, but uh you know, it's it's okay. So I'm going to I'm going to just go through some of the kernels here with the old kernel and the new kernel and and show you how the code changes or what kind of changes you need to make to your kernels to turn them into metal kernels. So right here I have some datum shift kernels from metal earth the new library so this is a metal file and i'm going to open up another file from the old project proj cl that's what do we got here kernel and pl datum okay so what is a datum shift in geographic computation uh, basically, you take a point in Cartesian x, y, z coordinates and you move it by a little bit. Uh, so you, you got to apply an affine transform, uh, like a, a 4x4 matrix that shifts the point in 3D. It says, I want you to move this much this way and this much that way and that much this way and scale it by a certain amount. Uh, so it's a fairly simple computation. Um, but I, I'm, I'm going to start out by showing you how a datum shift works kind of before and after, just to, to start out with a, a simple example. So, all right, here is, here's my OpenCL code and my metal code side by side uh, for what should be fairly straightforward. This is about the simple, one of the simpler kernels you can do. Uh, this is just a matrix multiplication. And here's the OpenCL on the top. And you'll notice there's nothing at the very top of the file. I do have a header file with some kind of utility functions. Uh, with OpenCL, I have to kind of concat those files manually in order to uh, have, like, a, it, like, I have to do the include myself. There's no include command in OpenCL. Uh, and one nice thing about Metal is that 
you can do includes. So I've got here in this line, I've got include header.h, which is the my file, and then I've got include metal standard library. Uh, so you can import different libraries this way. So that, that much is actually kind of handy. I should say at, at a high level, the main difference between the two is that OpenCL is based on C and Metal is based on C++. So there's a little bit more you can do with C++, although it can get a little bit hairy if you start like templating like crazy. Okay, so those, those are kind of the main differences. And now I'm gonna get into a little bit more of the details of uh, what it looks like. So. Yeah, so in my metal code, I do the include the standard library, and then I use the namespace metal, which is just the C++ thing to do. And I've got some constant here, which doesn't really change across both of these files. So OpenCL, even though you can't use includes, you can uh, use defines. And so, all right, so here's, here's kind of the action. And I, I've rewritten this code a little bit to... Um, be simpler. So that's that's something that I liked. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to walk through this just step by step to let you know what's going on. All right, so here's the OpenCL kernel. We've got underscore underscore kernel, which tells the compiler that this is a kernel uh, that will be run, which is just a function where you're setting, like you set up the number of uh, runs to do from the CPU side. And there's just the name of the function. It's a void, so it's not returning anything. Uh, kernels are always void. And here are the arguments that we're sending in. So for this, this is kind of simple. We have three buffers that represent the x, y, and z coordinates. I just decided in my code I wanted three separate coordinates for these. And then I have a transformation matrix, which in OpenCL is stored as a float 16. Uh, so the float 8, we've got these uh, kind of eight float wide vectors um, so I can access them like as S1, S or S0, S1, S2, S3 all the way through S7 and then the 16 I can access with uh, S0 through S15 and the reason I've done it here is when I was writing this I was writing for the CPU and then the documentation said well to take advantage of the scalar capability sorry the vector capabilities of the CPU you should express things as in as wide of vectors as you can. And then later they rewrite their compiler to actually properly vectorize on scalar code. And they say you don't have to do that anymore. But I just didn't bother updating because I was just so frustrated with having to like deal with their compiler in the first place and actually getting running code uh, back in the, the dark days of Lion and Mountain Lion. Um, so anyhow, so this is kind of a float 8 for historical reasons. And the float 16 is a way of just encoding a 4x4 four four matrix. And uh, now, here's what's interesting on the metal side. So metal looks very similar at the start. Instead of underscore underscore kernel, we just have the word kernel. And I need a better syntax highlighting file. I haven't found one for Vim. But... It, otherwise, it looks somewhat similar. So instead of this uh, global, oh yeah, so on the top we've got this underscore underscore global that just says that it's a like a device buffer that we're going to be reading from and writing to. And so we have three device buffers here, uh, which are kind of passed in as pointers. And we have something similar here, except instead of this global keyword, we have the device keyword. And I've rewritten the code here uh, for reasons I'll explain in a minute to be one single buffer of x, y, z coordinates instead of storing x, y, and z separately. And then instead of passing in a float 16 matrix, I pass in a float 4x4. Four four. So this is kind of cool. Metal supports small vector or small matrices up to 4x4. Four four. So you can have a float 2x2, two two, a float 2x3, a float 3x4, and etc, etc. Um, so this this is nice because it also supports uh, vector operators. Okay, so I was able to simplify this code considerably. So instead of doing this matrix multiplication by hand, just pulling out the individual elements from this 4x4 four four matrix and multiplying it by the appropriate thing, um, I can just do, I can reduce all of this code up here to this line right here where I'm just multiplying a vector. So x, y, z, 1 is a vector, which are the x, y, z coordinates, followed by a 1.0. 
And then I multiply that in like a vector matrix sort of way. So you take the vector, you pour it down the columns like you learned in Algebra 2 or whatever. And you multiply that by the matrix. And that results in a vector um, product. Uh, so this is this is pretty cool. Uh, I was I was pleased to discover this, and I only I only discovered that, discovered this earlier today, even though I've been porting metal code uh, all week, and so that that let me get rid of a lot of code. So I'm I'm actually pretty happy about that. Um, yeah, so you can multiply a matrix by a matrix and a vector by a matrix, and a scalar by a vector and a scalar by a matrix, and kind of all the usual like out like basic linear algebra operations that you'd expect. Although I, I don't think there's anything built in uh, for like inverting matrices here. Although there is a function for getting a matrix determinant. So if, if you want to go down the matrix inversion route, you, you may. So what I'm doing in the metal code is I do that multiplication, x, y, z, one times matrix. I've got a result, which are the x, y, z, and z coordinates, and then like an extra one at the end. And then I write it back to the x, y, z buffer by constructing a float 3 with the x, the y, and the z. So this result is a float 4, and I need to convert it to a float 3. So that's what that's what that line is about. So overall, this is a kind of an interesting win. Uh, oh, the other main difference here is that instead of this get global ID function, which you see at the top of the OpenCL kernel, Instead, we have an extra uh, argument passed to the kernel itself. And so I have the uint i as an argument, and then I have this attribute qualifier. So bracket, bracket, thread, position, and grid is the equivalent of get global ID. I think this is a lot cleaner um, than the OpenCL version, because otherwise you just have all these kind of built-in functions scattered around the top of your kernels. And here you've got these things that are not going to change in the uh, the body of the function, so it's kind of kind of nice just to put them all up with the arguments. Uh, so I I actually kind of like that. Now here's here's one tricky part that um, got me confused for a while, and I'm gonna I'm gonna like save you hours and hours of time right now. So in the OpenCL version, we've got these pointers. The, these global pointers are device buffers, and then we have this matrix passed by value, okay? In metal, you cannot pass arguments by value to a kernel. Yeah, I mean, you can do it in like a secondary function, but not in a kernel, okay? You can pass by pointer, which is what we do up here, and what we're doing with this XYZ or W buffer, um, but you cannot you can't just pass the value, you have to pass a reference. Okay, so what this does is it creates an, an extra buffer. So we, we write the, these values, this float four by four over on the C side, we're gonna write that as a buffer um, and pass that to the kernel. And then on this side, we're gonna say, that it's a constant buffer, so that's what this constant keyword is about. This is different from the const keyword. So const means that you, you're not gonna write to this value again. Um, constant means it's a buffer, and it's a read-only buffer, okay? So this is where you wanna store your, your kind of scalar arguments, or even your vector arguments, or things that would normally be passed by value. You store in the constant buffer space, and you just put this ampersand there to indicate that it's a C++ style reference. Uh, so if, if you've only programmed in C, then you're going to have to brush up, or you're going to go to figure out what references are from the C++ world. So ampersand in C usually means address of, but in C++ it also means uh, a reference to. So what this ends up doing is from the perspective of the function itself, matrix is just a value. Uh, but it's really referring kind of remotely to this buffer that has been passed to it. Uh, so essentially what I did in all of these kernels that I converted was put in an ampersand before the scalar arguments. Um, and that converted it to a reference, and then I could just pass the, the data in as a buffer. The only issue with that, okay, so this is where things get tricky, and here's, here's where I'm going to save you even more time is you are limited in metal, at least on Mac OS, to 14 constant buffers for your kernel. Okay, so you can you know, only, only have uh, 14 scalar arguments that you pass to the kernel. And 
for scientific stuff, you might be passing a lot of things. So if you hit up against that 14 limit, you need to consolidate some of those arguments into structs or into uh, vectors. One trick that I did was, you know, I was passing in like x0 and y0, and then I would just consolidate that into a float2 and call that the origin. And I'll, I'll show you some of that code in a minute. Um, so those, those were kind of the key things that I did was getting these things passed by reference and then doing some consolidation so you don't hit up on the system limits. I think 14 is the smallest limit that you'll run up against. Uh, so if you can get it under that number, you're good to go. I'll show you one other uh, function here uh, just to give you more of a feel for what metal looks like compared to OpenCL. Here are equivalent functions. This is geodesic to Cartesian. Again, I changed it up. Uh, well, first of all, I made I made two changes. One is instead of doing float 16s and float 8s, I went down to like float 1s and float 2s, since we're just running on the GPU and we don't we don't need to represent it as these giant vectors. And in, I mean, in order to get like all the SIMD capabilities and parallel capabilities. And uh, the other thing, I consolidated the x, y, and z buffers into x to just to x, y, z out, which is what I discussed in the previous kernel. So what you can see here, we've got underscore underscore kernel converted to regular kernel. We have underscore underscore global converted to device. And then we have float. So this is, uh, these are ellipsoidal computations that so these are like the uh, eccentricity, eccentricity squared, one minus the eccentricity squared. And to convert that to metal, I put this constant keyword to say this is going to be a constant buffer. And it's a reference. And just by doing that, it's the equivalent. This is ends up being equivalent to that in OpenCL. Uh, so that's, that's kind of all I needed to do. And then I converted this int i equals get global id to this thread position and grid, and everything's good to go. Um, one other, or some other uh, hang-ups or pitfalls you may run into is a metal doesn't have as many built-in functions as OpenCL. So in OpenCL, I had radians, which is all lit up in blue here, or cyan. And in metal, that's not a built-in. Um, so I had to write my own radians function. Not that it's very difficult. You're just multiplying by, you know, pi divided by 180. Um, but the degrees and radians functions are not available. You have to write your own. One uh, kind of nice thing is since it's C++, you can do like some function overloading. So I'll show you the header file in just a second here, which, yeah, it's the header.h. Um, you can overload it, so you can have degrees, for example, take a scalar radians argument, or you can have like a float2 version of it, where it takes a float2 and returns a float2. And that way, maybe you can take advantage of some SIMD capabilities on the GPU itself. I, I haven't really tested too extensively, um, but it can also just simplify your code when you're working on small vectors. Okay, so you're going to have to write your own radians and, radians and degrees. Maybe write some other stuff as well. Uh, one thing that I have found also is that if you turn fast math on, the results are terrible. Like, <laughs> it's like a really sloppy math um, when you have fast math. So that's that's an option you can enable. Uh, that's kind of a, beyond the scope of what I want to talk about here. Um, but something something to keep in mind. Uh, although I think is it. I think by default fast math is enabled. Uh, so to get rid of fast math, you have to pass in dash f no fast math. Uh, so look it up in the shader documentation to, to learn more. But if you have if you're getting like terrible results, uh, that that might be the cause. One other thing to note is in, in kind of in terms of the built-in functions, uh, sin cause something I use a lot. It, it computes the sine as well as the cosine. In OpenCL, it uses sort of the C signature, which is it takes a double, and then you have uh, a pointer to a double where you store the result. In Metal, it takes a reference to a double in the second argument, which means you do not pass the ampersand. You don't pass the address of it. You just pass this, pass it by value, but that takes it by reference, and then it writes the result into cosine phi, which is something you could not do in, uh, in C or OpenCL. Uh, it's just it's just a stylistic difference. This thing's gonna break on you if you don't make that change uh, to your code. Um, 
some anything else here. I don't remember. Oh yeah, um, I ended up using the r square root function. It says in the documentation, uh, square root is written in terms of r square root, which is reciprocal square root. I don't know how much of a difference that makes, but that's just some something I noticed in the uh, the metal docs that r square root. Um, seems to be the more primitive function, so I rewrote some things in terms of that if I was dividing by a square root. And then, anything else in here? No, it's just the same trick of writing to writing a float 3 to a single buffer rather than the 3, but that, that was my own stylistic choice. You, you don't necessarily have to follow that. And then, anything else I want to talk about here? Oh yeah, like uh, the hypot function, also something that's not available. Uh, you should use the like length function instead. Um, it's just the, the standard library is just a, a bit different. So you gotta something something to be aware of. So I'll I guess I will show you a uh, maybe a projection function. Is that what one I want to do? Nah. And what I'm gonna show you now is um, it's just a simple yeah, all right, so there's also the uh, samplers you can use. So this is something I also have in this library where I have a list of points and I want to sample some points in an image. Uh, in my own software, it's I uh, take some projected points and then figure out where on like the picture of Earth those fall and then I want to sample that point so then I can make like a nice warped image uh, of the Earth and the the API for that is a bit different. I'll show you what it looks like just for the giggles. It's a very C++ looking API compared to the old uh, C looking API of uh, the OpenCL. So let's see here. Sample maybe? Yes. All right. Keep it simple. Okay. So on, on the top here, I've got some OpenCL code. And this took the, we had the global two, so that's the device buffer. And then this was how you indicated images. You said read only image 2D and write only image 2D. Uh, here in the metal, instead we have this like uh, parameterized. So it, it's a texture 2D and parameterized with float, which is the underlying like data structure. So images can store integers or floating point numbers. And then instead of read only and write only we write access sample saying that this image can be sampled or this image can be written to or access colon colon write again we have this uh, thread position and grid before this was a u int i in the argument and if we have the kernel running in two dimensions then i is going to be a u int two and so you get the kind of the get global ID zero is equivalent to I dot X, get global ID one is equivalent to I dot Y. Uh, so I had to change all my I's in the code to I dot X and all my J's to I dot Y. So just, just something to be aware of. It's, it's a clever little design uh, using vectors to indicate the position and then the number of threads per grid that's passed in as this uh, uint2, which I call size here and previously was J size. Okay, so what else is different? Uh, the sampler, so in the OpenCL code, we just had this like um, bit ord thing going on with CLK underscore normalized underscore chords underscore false, CLK underscore address underscore clamp, CLK underscore filter underscore linear. This is cleaned up a bit and on the metal side with like C++ looking enums or whatever these are so it's cord colon colon pixel address colon colon clamp to border filter colon colon linear it looks a bit nicer and then instead of saying a const sampler t you use this keyword const expert uh, and it means that the sampler is created once instead of created for every single kernel uh, that's being executed otherwise we'd have, we'd have like a sampler for every pixel in the image which is not what we want we just want this to be created once and the sampler is stored in the variable s and then just do us to sample it uh, previously we used the read image f function and the write image f function to read from a image and to write to an image now we do uh, use methods on 
the image or on the, the texture to the texture 2D. So we say image in dot sample instead of read image F. And so we say image in dot sample, pass it to sampler, and then pass it the coordinates of where we want to take the sample. And then similarly, if we want to write something out, we're going to write out a pixel, which here, since we declared this as parameterized with a float, it's a float four. We're going to write the pixel, and then we're going to write the tell it the coordinates where we want the uh, pixel data written. So it, it does look a bit nicer on the metal side, and then things can get a little bit crazier. Um, I've got some kind of complicated code for dealing with a bunch of different tiles and trying to uh, get the edge cases correct when you're uh, interpolating between those. Uh, other little differences, instead of get image width and get image height, you have, I think, yeah, image dot get width, image dot get height, kind of a slightly nicer object-oriented API. Um, and um, yeah, it's, you know, it's okay. Um, it's fairly straightforward to convert these things once you figure out the C++ uh, conventions here and the references and using, yeah, these, these enums or what have you and the thread position and all that. Uh, one thing that I really like is that the, the tools are just so much better. Like, oh, the command line tools for OpenCL were terrible. Um, and like... You'd tell it to compile compile something as binary, and it would just spit out a plain text representation of the binary, or just something ridiculous. Um, even just broke completely on Mojave. Uh, the the metal tools are are good. You can compile. I can show you my dumb little make file, um, but you can compile the metal files individually into these intermediate files called air files. So we just say metal, you know. XC run metal, uh, give it the source code and then say put that, compile that to an intermediate representation, in this case header.air. And then we do have this like linking stage where we call metal lib with all the intermediate files and produce one big fat dot metal lib. Um, this just feels much more like traditional uh, command line tools for building and having intermediate files and having a final file. Uh, compared to OpenCL, which was just, they, they tried, but it just never worked. I, I always had to ship the source, the actual OpenCL source with my code and then compile on the host. None of the, the intermediate representations just seem like complete garbage. Um, at least so far, it seems a lot better uh, with uh, with the, the metal tools. So I, I'm i pleased about that. Uh, oh yeah, here's what you want to pass to uh, dash F no fast math. If you actually want to have like proper mathematical results, I highly recommend that. The, I think they're, I think they had math, fast math turned on by default because otherwise it's just kind of slow. In my tests, it's about half the speed of similar OpenCL kernels. Um, hopefully that will improve with time, uh, especially since they're getting rid of OpenCL. Um, so, and yeah, as, as I mentioned in my opening phone call with uh, Tim, the uh, the tests that I've seen out there on YouTube, people have also found that Metal's been a bit slower. So they they got more to do, but they've declared OpenCL as the past and Metal as the future. So away we go. Uh, so yeah, that's that's all I got for you here on today's video. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of OpenCL and Metal code, and I hope you weren't too discouraged by it. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, please leave a comment. I read all the comments because I don't have many subscribers. And I'll, uh, I'll at least read it and probably write back to you. And if you enjoyed it, hit the old like a button. Thanks for watching.